a pleasant welcome to all now we are going to study about input and output hardware video lecture and e-content created by rd sivakumar msc mphil m tech assistant professor of computer science and assistant professor and head department of mcom ca ayanadar janakimal college sivakasi mobile 0994042243 email siva msc csit at gmail.com website www.rdsivakumar.blacksport.in input output hardware input output devices can be roughly categorized as storage communication user interface and other devices communicate with the computer via signals sent over wires or through the air devices connect with the computer via ports example a serial or parallel port a common set of wires connecting multiple devices is termed as bus four bus types in a modern pc the PCI bus connects high speed high bandwidth devices to a memory subsystem the expansion bus connects slower low bandwidth devices which typically deliver data one character at a time the SCSI bus connects a number of SCSI devices to a common SCSI controller a daisy chain bus is when a string of devices is connected to each other like beds on a chain and only one of the devices is directly connected to the host and this is an example of the four buses four registers the data in register is read by the host to get input from the device the data out register is written by the host to send output the status register has bits read by the host to ascertain the status of the device such as idle read for ready for input busy error transaction complete etc the control register has bits written by the host to issue comments or to change settings of the device such as parity checking word length or full versus half duplex operation and input output address range it displays the hexadecimals and 000 to 00f hexadecimal the device is dma controller 020 to 021 hexadecimal is the device's interrupt controller 040 to 043 hexadecimal the device's timer 200 to 20f hexadecimal it, the device's game controller 2f8 to 2ff hexadecimal the device's serial port secondary 320 to 32f hexadecimal the device's hard disk controller 378 to 37f hexadecimal the device's parallel port 3d0 to 3df the device's graphics controller 3f0 to 3f7 the device's diskette drive controller 3f8 to 3ff the device's serial port primary memory mapped input and output in this case a certain portion of the processor address space is mapped to the device and communication occur by reading and writing directly to from those memory areas memory mapped input and output is suitable for devices which must move large quantities of data quickly such as graphics cards memory mapped input and output can be used either instead of or more often in combination with traditional registers pooling one simple means of device handshaking involves pooling the host repeatedly checks the busy bit at the device until it becomes clear the host writes a byte of data into the data out register and sets the write bit in the command register the host sets the command ready bit in the command register to notify the device of the pending command when the device controller sees the command ready bit set it first sets the busy bit then the device controller reads the command register sees the write bit set reads the byte of data from the data out register and outputs the byte of data the device controller then clears the error bit in the status register the command ready bit and finally clears the busy bit signaling the complications of the operation pooling can be very fast and efficient if both the device and the controller are fast and if there is significant data to transfer 
it becomes inefficient however in the host must wait a long time in the busy loop waiting for the device or if frequent checks need to be made for data that is infrequently there interrupts interrupts allow devices to notify the cpu when they have data to transfer or when an operation is complete allowing the cpu to perform other duties when no input and output transfers need it immediate attention the cpu has a interrupt request line that is sensed after every instruction a device controller raises an interrupt by asserting a signal on the interrupt request line the cpu then performs a state save and transfer control to the interrupt handler routine at the first fixed address in memory the interrupt handler determines the cause of the interrupt performs the necessary processing performs a state restore and executes a return from interrupt a certain to return control to the cpu and this is an example of interrupt driven input and output cycle three needs of modern computing the need to defer interrupt handling during critical processing the need to determine which interrupt handler to invoke without having to pull all devices to see which one needs attention the need for multi level interrupt so the system and can determine when between high and low priority interrupts for proper response intel pentium process event vector table zero the description is device error one debug exception two null interrupt three breakpoint four into detected overflow five bounded range exception six invalid opcode Seven device not available. Eight double fault. Nine crow processor segment overrun. Ten invalid task state segment. Eleven segment not present. Twelve stake fault. Thirteen general production. Fourteen page fault. Fifteen Intel reserve do not use. Sixteen floating point error. Seventeen alignment check. 18 machine check 19 to 31 intel reserve do not use 32 to 255 maskable interrupts direct memory access for devices that transfer large quantities of data it is wasteful to tie up the cpu transferring data in and out of registers one byte at a time instead this work can be offloaded to a special processor known as direct memory access DMA controller the host issues a command to a DMA controller indicating the location where the data is located the allocation when the data to be transferred and on the number of bytes of data to transfer the DMA controller handles the data transfer and then interrupts the CPU when the transfer is complete a simple DMA controller is a standard component in modern PCs and many bus mastering Input and output cards contain their own DMA hardware. Handshaking between DMA controllers and their devices is accomplished through two wires called the DMA request and DMA acknowledge wire. While the DMA transfer is going on, the CPU does not have access to the PCI bus, but it does have access to the internal register and primary and secondary coaches. DMA can be done in terms of either physical addresses or virtual addresses that are mapped to physical addresses the later approach is known as direct virtual memory access DVMA and allows direct data transfer from one memory mapped device to another without using the main memory chips steps in DMA transfer the first step is device driver is told to transfer disk data to buffer at address x the second step is device drivers tells disk controller to transfer c bytes from disk to buffer at address x the third step is disk controller indicates dma controller and the fourth step disk controller sends each byte to dma controller on the fifth disk 
DMA controller transfers bytes to buffer X increasing memory address and decreasing C until C equal to 0. And sixth step, when C equal to 0, DMA interrupts CPU T signal transfer complication. Thank you.